A couple of months ago, I decided that I wanted to learn a new programming language. I am personally fond of both C and C++, and I also like working in video game related things. So I started reading through the languages that are available today, and I just wanted to share my whole experience in this video. The first thing that we need to address is why do we have so many programming languages to choose from? If we go to Wikipedia and search for the programming language list, you'll see that there's actually way too many of them. I don't even think I know half of these. And to be fair, uh, some of them might actually be dead already, uh, but that's besides the point. The thing is that we have a lot of things to choose from in that list. Okay, so why? Well, simply put, some of us, and I mean developers, feel like the current programming languages that we're using are bad for a wide variety of reasons. Like I said before, I love game development stuff. And you want to know what you need to make games? Graphics. And most, maybe all, graphics API are written in C. That essentially means that wh whatever language that you might end up using is going to either have a package or a library that wraps those low-level functions which causes some overhead. Depending on the application, this might be negligible. A lot of people hate C because it lacks a ton in its standard library. C++, on the other hand, has a ton in its standard library, but some people just hate the way those were implemented. I would say that it mainly boils down to the fact that it overuses a ton of templates. Some people will say that it's the object-oriented part about it that makes it bad. Either way, the thing is that people complain about both languages. So, where does that leave us? Some people have been trying for quite a while now to get a realistic alternative to either language because of how problematic both languages can become in large enough code bases. I personally use C++ in a very minimalist way. So I mean that I, I don't use a ton of the new features, I don't tend to use any of the new headers that take an eternity to compile, I just don't like doing that. I like to basically keep everything very, very simple. I compile the whole project every single time, I just have a make file that does one compilation every single time that I want to run the project and be done with it. Um, I understand that in the industry it's, it's normal for companies to rely heavily on the standard library because, you know, I, I think it does make a lot of sense, but there's a lot of people that don't really like that or are not too happy about it. Without getting too much into either C or C++ problems, I just wanted to look at what realistic alternatives are out there. So I'll first outline the things that I am looking for. So the first is that the language needs to have some form of C interoperability. Like, I need to be able to call C functions, and I need it to be easy to do, and yeah, that's it. I need the language to be industry relevant. And what I mean by that is that there are some amount of jobs posted, you know, every now and then, because I'm not getting rich off of YouTube and I need to eat, <laughs> essentially. And I need the language to be production ready. Like, I don't want to be using a beta uh, version that might have some problems. I, it, like, I just need it to be stable. Here is the list of the possible candidates that I had to choose from. I don't like Java or C Sharp because of the strip object-oriented paradigm that forces the developer. That's why I didn't include them. Plus, I do have some experience in those languages. I'll first focus on the languages that I eliminated. And I mean, the only reason that I actually eliminated them is because they don't display like a production release version or anything like that. The languages were V, Zig, J, and Carbon. I mean, J is not even open beta and Carbon doesn't even have like a beta or something. So I did read through their wikis and they do seem like really interesting projects, but I just want to wait a little while for them to release an actual like production version or something. Like I don't want to go into the rabbit hole for something that might not go anywhere. I think they will go somewhere to be fair, uh, but that's just like at the time that I'm, that I'm doing this. The next languages that I eliminated were Nim, Odin, and D. And to be fair, either of these could replace C++ on the surface level investigation that I did. Um, 
maybe in, on a deeper investigation this might not be the case i'm not sure but they do seem to sell like a really interesting idea and they do seem to be production ready d is for sure at least i know that odin has some i, I think production software already out there um i think it's called ember gem or something i don't know they do some cool uh effects and name is also production ready according to their to their website now the only problem with these languages again is that there aren't really any job postings at the moment um, i hope that's going to change in the future and i'll keep an eye to see what, what i can do with them but yeah that's the only reason i had to eliminate these now the remaining two go and rust these two have a very different approach to solving things while Go thrives in, in its simplicity, uh, Rust is just adding more and more features with every release. I decided to, to make the game break out in both languages and see which one felt better to my liking at least. And surprise surprise, being a C++ fanboy, some things didn't feel good in either language, but I mean that's okay, it, it's expected. Uh, now the important part was, which of the two I like most? Go is a garbage collected language, which I honestly don't mind or care for that, <laughs> to be completely honest. Uh, but the thing is that in real time applications, you want to prioritize responsiveness uh, above all. Now, this can actually become a problem, but uh, I've read a lot that says that Go performance is really good, so that might not actually be a problem. I don't know. Rust, on the other hand, isn't garbage collected, I think. They use this concept of the borrow checker, where you have to define ownership of resources, memory at all times. So the whole point, or at least as I understood it, is that most issues will pop up at compile times. This honestly made it the preferred option in the beginning. As I kept writing the code for the game, something started to become really apparent in Rust. The syntax just didn't do it for me. Before continuing writing the game, I started looking into more resources for both languages, like what is the overall opinion of people that have worked in large projects that use them. And my idea going into that investigation was that Rust, being a much stricter language, could make things rough at times. And to be fair, I was Kind of right, at least under the opinions of the things that I research, almost all cons list I look up regarding Rust mentioned the steep learning curve for using the language. That in my view just means that the strictness of the language makes it so sometimes writing things can become like tedious. Go, on the other hand, while not being so performant compared to C or Rust, seems to be loved in projects of all sizes. There's even a lot of people claiming that doing multi-threading work in Go feels so good. On top of, of the things that I mentioned, while Rust is being adopted more and more as of today, there aren't that many job postings. And I do hope that this will change in the near future, just because, I mean, the popularity of this language is really high at the moment, and even the Linux kernel team is considering allowing uh, Rust to be used for the kernel development, so it, it can actually change in the near future at any time. But for now, I just decided to stick to Go because of those reasons. So yeah, I didn't finish the breakout game in Rust, but I did finish it in Go. Here's the demo. I did run into some problems, but it was mostly my execution. I, I was just doing some offsets incorrectly for OpenGL. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I, I did have to use some weird GL pointer functions, offsets, I don't know. They were weird and they were not clear in the documentation for what I could see. Uh, but other than that, I mean, I like how it feels in general to use Go and use OpenGL and I'm actually gonna try to make a new game with it and you know I'll post the source code as well. 
And before I finish the video, I just wanted to say that I also wrote the source code viewer that you're seeing right now. I took inspiration from a guy named Biscuit. I'll leave a link to his channel as well. He uses something like that. Uh, I thought that I was going to be doing a lot of cool things with my little project, but I don't even remember why I started doing it, <laughs> to be honest. But that's going to be also hosted on GitHub, and I don't know, it can be the useless piece of code number two or something. And, you know, if anyone wants to maybe review it, maybe it's useful for someone, I don't know. But anyways, um, if anyone wants to ask any question, just go ahead. You can send me an email or comment in the video. It's it's good. I mean, it can be an Emacs question, a programming question, whatever it is that you have on mind. Maybe we can discuss it. It's fine. But thank you for watching and you have a good day.